you, Tandy, for this beautiful song. And thank you the, to the praise team. I really like it and it's uh, make a big difference. Thank you. Our topic for today, how to achieve true success. There are at least six steps, very common steps, uh, that teach us how to have su success. Number one, build a growth mindset. Number two, improve your emotion intelligence. Three, develop mental toughness. Strengthen your willpower. Set achievable goals. Cultivate strong social support. All of this is very good and have some merit. However, this morning I would like to share with you from the biblical point of view what really is true success. To begin with, you need to believe that you can reach success to be successful. If you think you can, you can. The opposite is also true. Sandy. <laughs> You cannot achieve what you do not pursue. If you ask people about what is success for them, in general, you will hear these uh, answers. To be economically self-sufficient. Another one? when I retire, when I finish my career, when I get married, or even when my last son leaves the house, or when my dog dies. The scripture says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, Amen. just as your soul so prospers. And let's take a look at Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, is our verse for today. We can look at the Bible, see if we don't see it in the screen. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not be depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in, in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Let's see what is not success, and hopefully at the end you will find what so sex is really about. Number one, success is not money. And maybe you, can, you have heard this, with money you can buy a place with paintings of Picasso, Michelangelo, Monet, but you cannot buy love and respect from those who live with you and within your community. With money, you can have the best doctor, but you can't buy health. With money, you can buy a luxury bed, but you can't buy a clean conscience and a good rest. 1923, 
a group of millionaires meet together in the Edgewater Beach Hotel in Chicago. They managed more money than the treasurer of this country. Let's see what happened to some of them 30 years later. Jesse Livermore committed suicide at the age of 51. Leon Fraser, president of the first national bank, committed suicide at the age of 55. Charles Schwab, the last five years of his life, he lived with borrowing money. Arthur Hutton died in poverty. They knew how to make money, but they didn't enjoy a life of success. Christina Onassis, daughter of Aristoteles Onassis, used to pay anybody who wanted to play with her tennis or to go swimming or have a dinner. She had a fortune, but he died, she died alone. Elvis Presley, Michael Jackson, had many luxury cars. They, they didn't have time to drive it. Money attracts many people to yourself but doesn't buy a true friendship. So money is not a success. Money in itself is not a problem. The problem is how do you use it? And the Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil kinds in, uh, in our lives. Number two, success is not achieving goals. One goal is reaching retirement. That's my case. I'm already three years retired. I had I had to retire one year earlier because of Zara's uh, during the pandemic. That's my case. Well, retirement can be pleasant, pleasant if you know how to spend your time without spending money. <laughs> because now we're receiving much less money. I believe in having goals, but yes, I believe in goals, if they don't become stations or gods, we always need to grow and advance. Number three, su success is not power. Adolf Hitler achieved the absolute power in Germany. April 30, 1945, committed suicide after her lover. And also, he poisoned his German shepherd and then committed suicide. Two days earlier, he ordered his body to be incinerated to avoid what happened with Mussolini in Italy. President Obrador from Mexico used to say, absolute power is absolute corruption. 
Also, he says, power to the intellectuals, make of them fools, and the fools go crazy. Power, the same thing with the money, is not the real problem. If you have power, you can do a lot of things good for the society. Number four, success is not determined by circumstances. Through all history, there have been great men and women that live under adverse circumstances. I'm including in that group. But they overcame. Let's see one, uh, some of the examples. John Bunyan, or Bunyan, I don't know how you pronounce it. He wrote his work, The Pilgrim Progress, when he was in prison. Or Ledwin van Beethoven, after he lost his hearing, he composes the best symphonies. One of my favorite, maybe many of them, but five, six, <laughs> pastoral, violin concerto, extraordinary. And he did it after he lost his hearing. He was very worried what he's going to do. Or Abraham Lincoln. I've been hearing about Abraham Lincoln since I was seven years old in primary, in my elementary school in Mexico. He born in extreme uh, po poverty. Or what about African Americans in this country? like Booker Washington. I don't know how many of you have read about this gentleman. Let me share a few things he wrote. To improve a country, you must improve yourself. Amen. This may sound revolutionary in our times, in an age of entitlements. Victimology and cancel culture, but it is the truth. If you want to improve your country, improve yourself. His message, improve yourself through education, employment, and start or start a business. Respect authority, respect life, and respect private property. Character, no single circumstances make the man. Wow, this is extraordinary. Or what about the singer Maria Anderson, or the first boy that survived in an Italian family of 18. I told my family was the biggest. We're 12 brothers and sisters. But this boy, the first one that survived in an fa Italian, Italian family of 18, Enrico Caruso. Or a boy that was too slow to learn something according to his teacher. You know who was it? Who is it? Einstein. Einstein. The real success 
is to overcome adverse circumstances and do not live as a victim of the circumstances. Number five, success is not to have everything. You see the picture of, I don't know if you recognize it, Tolstoy, Leo, Leo Tolstoy, Russian writer. He wrote about a man who was always dissatisfied with himself. But he heard that somewhere in his country, they were giving away a lot of land with a little bit of amount of money. All the land you want, or you can walk for one day. I would like to have that. All the land you can walk for one day with only like a thousand dollars for that. So he started very early in the morning, walking everywhere. There was one condition. He had to come back before sundown. Otherwise, he's going to lose everything. He was very emotional during the day that almost forgot about it. There was only one more hour and he has to go back, running. And he got there just on time. But because he was exhausted, he fell down to the floor and died of a heart attack. Right there, he was buried. The story ends with asking a question. How much land man really needs? Six feet long, three feet wide. <laughs> True success comes from going, doing God's will and to achieve God's purpose in our lives. Number six, success is not maintaining the status quo. The status quo is stagnation. If you don't improve and grow, you die. As a church, we need to improve and grow every day. As a leaders of the church, we need to improve and grow every day. Or as an individual, we need to do the same. Let's take a look at Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Philippians chapter 3. Thirteen and fourteen, he says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal or the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. We need to improve and grow every day. There is a Japanese proverb that says, there is not poverty that can overcome diligence. There is no poverty that can overcome, overcome diligence. After World War II, Japan was devastated. 
But now, today, Japanese products are the best in the world. There is an important word in their vocabulary. I know zero Japanese, so I have to write it here. Kaizen. Any Japanese here? No? Kaizen means constant improvement. Number seven, success is not avoiding criticism. And I'm not justifying criticism, okay? A spirit of criticism opens the door to Satan's influence. We have to be very careful. But criticism is ine inevitable. That's the bad news. There are three ways to avoid criticism. Do you know what are they? What are they? Three ways to avoid criticism. Do nothing, say nothing, be nothing. But since criticism is inevitable, Someone is going to criticize you for doing nothing, saying nothing, and being nothing. Now, there is justified and unjustified criticism. There is an Arab proverb, let's see if we can see it in the, on the screen. If a person calls you a donkey, don't worry about it. Just forgot about it. But if I call you a donkey, buy yourself a saddle. <laughs> in, Hisp in Spanish, uh, we have something very similar. Si te queda el saco, póntelo. In, in English, if the jacket fits you, wear it. That's the same thing. Now, there is a justified criticism. But there is also unjustified criticism. And needs to be analyzed in order to see if it is true. And consider also who is criticizing you. Because it could be motivated by envy, jealousy, or malice. Was Jesus criticized? Yes. But he knew that it was unjustified criticism and irrational. Success, as God sees it, Let's take a look at Matthew, chapter 23, verses 11 and 12. Matthew 23, verses 11 and 12. But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whoever exalts himself will be abased. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. True success is a life of service. In Romans chapter 1, verse 1, let's take a look. Romans 1, 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. <clears throat> I love this title. 
it is a blessing, a privilege to belong to the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and submit our will to the will of God. This is the real liberty and a true success. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Let's go back to Joshua again before we finish. Joshua 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not be depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. The obedience to the law of God be having a communion with God in other words, together, God with me, I with God, will be invincible. The result of having communion with God and obedience to the commandments, you will have prosperity and a good success. Four steps that will lead you to total victory and success. Number one, communion with God, meditation in his word, faith, trust in God's promises, boldness and courage whenever you face uh, adversity, and obedience to the commandments of God. May God bless you this morning. And we're going to